Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today is a very special day. We get to unbox the Marvel Crisis Protocol core set. This is what comic style painting is all about and I am so stoked. Just gonna very gently cut the shrink wrap. I've had people asking me for weeks if I'm going to be painting these miniatures. And I think you've got a definitive answer now. So let's see what's in the box here. Of course, the rules, which we will look at after. There is a lot of painting examples in here. This is fantastic. There's your uh, assembly instructions as well. Pretty straightforward. And there's even assembly instructions for the car. Which is funny because it's attached bottom, attached tires, attached mirrors. Oh, there's a taxi do that on top. We got the daily bugle. We got some other terrain as well. That's pretty awesome. We've got the damage control logo on the dumpster, which is pretty cool. And of course, the daily bugle. Little newsstand. This is all great. Here we have our stat cards for the models. And there should be 10 in here. Baron Zemo, Black Widow, Captain America, Captain Marvel, Crossbones, Doc Ock. Iron Man, Red Skull, Spider-Man, and Ultron. That is a perfect little set there. Looking forward to getting these painted. I honestly, the thing I hate the most about doing unboxings is all the stuff I have to go through to get to the miniatures. Cause, because you guys know me, I spend way, way more time painting than I ever do playing games. Two sheets of tokens. Not really too concerned about them right now. We'll look through them after. It's a nice heavy cardstock though. And here we go. There's the Daily Bugle and some traffic lights and sprues and sprues and sprues and sprues and sprues and sprues. Our D8 action dice. And a set of cards. Let's take a quick look at these. I actually haven't seen these yet. Oh, there's something else in here. Hang on a minute. Went to move the box and I'm like, wait, I hear more sounds. Oh, there's some cars. Do we have anything over here? Yes, we do. Ah, oh, the uh, widgets. Let's, uh, okay, now we can put the box away. Let's take a quick look at these cards here. So we have deployment cards, tell you sort of how the city sets up. Cabal versus Avengers, mission objective, sacrifice, inspiring monologue, brace for impact. Let's just pick one of these at random. Smash, that sounds good. Unaffiliated, if the active character is within one X? I don't know the symbols yet. We'll figure that out. We can go back to the rule book later. Let's just not bother reading cards right now. We got lots of these. There's a lot of them. I'm assuming some of these are going to be faction specific, like, or not. Age of Ultron is unaffiliated somehow. Dark Reign is affiliated. Okay. So they're not all unaffiliated cards. What have we got here? Daily Bugle. Okay. What are these? So we have three and three. We have reds and we have blues. These are our missions. Deadly meteor mutates civilians. Place three origin bombs, target of opportunity, as shown on map C. Map C was one of those little maps we put aside. There we are. So center, left, right. 
The player controlling the most origin bombs scores three victory points during the cleanup phase. Cool, cool, cool. We'll, uh, we'll look more into these. Again, we are a miniature show here. We are not a gaming and rules show to the same extent. So let's get on with the miniatures. Let's not worry about reading these right now. Because we don't have the context for them. I haven't read the rulebook yet, so anything I read in there is going to be functionally meaningless anyway. So, we have two cars. There should be some more parts to these cars in another box. Actually, they're right there. I can see the wheels and the chassis. That's really great though, you actually get little scale cars for it. That's just fantastic, because of course I'm pretty sure you can throw them around. Here's what we're going to do, we're going to build someone right now. So I've got the 10 character cards here. I'm going to roll a d10 and that's what card I'm going to pull. Oh, there's a d12. There's my 10, okay. I'm just going to roll a d10, we're going to build a character. We got a 4, which is going to be... One, two, three, we're building Captain America. All right, let's find the sprue. So I can clearly see Doc Ock and Ultron here, and some dumpsters. I I could have rolled a D12 and included the dumpsters and the cars, but they seem less exciting. Dumpsters are only fun when you're smashing them. Okay, we've got, there he is. Here is our Captain America sprue. And let's figure out which base he goes on. We'll reference the rule book for that. Right at the back, Mike. There's Ultron, there's Zemo, there's more Ultron. Wow, he's two-pager. Ultron is clearly the biggest character in this box. Captain Marvel. I feel like I missed one. Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, Red Skull, Doc Ock, Black Widow, Iron Man. Captain America. Wow, I went right by it. Okay, and his base is... One of these ones. So we've got pre-detailed bases that are very clearly meant to indicate or represent uh, city terrain. Give that a little clip. I like there's only one point of clipping on these. That's pretty good. I'm just going to clip the rest of this sprue while I've got it out. Because why not? And there, that's one bit of sprue I can get rid of. Now, before I do this, let's just take a look at all the sprues here. I'm going to zoom the camera in and we'll kind of go over them one by one. So actually do Captain America last because we're clearly going to assemble him. Alright, so let's go over some of our character frames here. Alright, so there's the Iron Man frame, and it's actually interesting, the legs are each in three parts. We've got a left and right half of the thigh, calves, left and right half of the thigh. The arms are also in several parts. We've got hand, upper arm, lower arm, hand and upper arm, or lower arm together, the upper arm. The head is a single piece, and then we've got the shoulders. And of course, torso has a front and back, and it's all keyed assembly. You've got, you know, little holes and little keys that go in the holes, so you can't really get this too wrong. Alright, next we're looking at Black Widow. She's a little bit less detailed. And it looks like she actually came with an extra hand? Yeah, she's got more than one hand there. So I'm going to look at the assembly instructions here. So we've got a front and back of the torso, the head. We have a left hand, two right hands, an upper arm, another left hand? No, nope, that's where... Okay, so these go on top of that. But yeah, we've basically got two different options for the left hand. That's interesting. Or rather, two options for the right hand. Sorry. Single left hand, two rights. And a little holster that goes on her side. Alright, who have we got here? I'm going to assume this is Crossbones. Yes, it is. Now, what I'm also looking at here is just, I haven't really checked to see what the mold lines look like. We'll I'll get to that more when we get to working on assembling Captain America here. But yeah, Crossbones is noticeably bigger than either Iron Man or Black Widow. A little bit bulkier, a little more uh, fleshed out, as it were. I think one thing to watch for, there's actually a tiny looks like an ejection pin right on the side of his head here. I'm not sure if that's actually a part of the model. It might just be there to make it easy to eject. And his head or face is actually separate from the rest of his head. So we've got a lot of almost Malifaux style splitting, but a little bit more sensical because you know his head's in two parts and it's also 40 mil instead of a tiny little goblin head in three pieces. Baron Zemo. 
His head is a single piece, which is nice. We've got what looks like four either shoulder pads or knee pads. We've got two part 10s and two part 12s. It almost looks like they've given you extra of the tiniest parts, expecting that you might accidentally lose them. I don't know for sure that's what's happening, but it kind of feels that way. The sword is very, very thin. It's actually already broken off of the uh, little bit of a uh, supporting sprue there. So just keep an eye on that. It may actually have never made contact with that if I'm being honest. I don't see damage here. Like it doesn't look like it broke apart. So this may have just been an adjacent ejection pin. It's hard to say. It's a very thin sword. It's one of the thinnest pieces I've ever seen done in plastic. Let's grab our next Ziploc baggie of miniatures here. We've got Red Skull up first. Red Skull is pretty straightforward. Front and back of his trench coat. Some little feet that go underneath it. And of course, we've got an assortment of other parts. We have two Tesseracts. So I think again, yeah, and they're both labeled part three. So it looks like they give you extras of the easiest parts to lose. And that is phenomenal attention to detail. So far, that's three sprues we've seen that on now. Here we're looking at Spider-Man. Spider-Man has two heads, both labeled part six. No, part, yes, that is a six. So again, the easiest part to lose is replicated on the sprue. That is a really, I've never seen anyone do that before. The closest I've come to that is the um, Warlord Titan from Games Workshop has a whole extra limb in it because it has three weapon options. And normally they only let you build you know, two options, and they actually put an extra shoulder and everything in it, and I thought that was cool. Now, it doesn't look like there's spare parts for Captain Marvel. Not that there needs to be. Pretty straightforward piece. I'm really loving the detail on the costumes. And a lot of people, I think, were concerned about the scale of these. The head, because it's a 40 mil game, and we're all very much used to slightly smaller scale, 28 mil. But honestly, the head here doesn't look a lot bigger than say a games workshop head. So I think it's just that the body is going to be more proportionately correct, if anything. A little bit of a uh, rock that she jumps off of or stands on. All right, last couple characters. Nope, that's a car. Where, oh, where is Doc Ock and Ultron? I might need to zoom the camera out for this one. Yeah, here we have Ultron, and he comes in a lot of parts. So we saw, just glancing through the book, this was the longest assembly. There's two part number threes here. Looks like, again, our smallest part has been duplicated. Same with our part number two. We just got some doubles. It's also possible we need more than one of those. I haven't done the assembly yet, so I don't know for sure. But it's really looking like they've given us duplicates of some parts here. And he's just standing on some tactical rubble. Very highly posed. Part of his head, the other part of his head. I can't wait to put this guy together. And here we have Doc Ock. And I'm checking for duplicate numbers on the sprues. Two part 11s, two part 12s, two part 16. No, that's a 15 and a 16. So we've got duplicates of whatever these little bits are. And again, they may come in handy. I'm actually going to look at the rules or the assembly instructions next to see if that's the case. Because that's a lot of miniatures that have duplicate parts now, and I'm actually really curious about that. So let's, for example, let's look at Black Widow, because that was the first one I noticed, and her hands looked slightly different. So Black Widow has... a single left hand, and a single right hand. So yeah, that is just literally a spare part on the sprue. Spider-Man as well, remember we saw we had a spare head. Obviously he's not going to use two heads. So it's just literally spares. That is such an awesome attention to detail. Just giving you extras of the pieces you're most likely to lose is just phenomenal. That's, um, again, we have the same thing with the Tesseract here. There's only, you only need one to build them. Uh, we got Red Skull here and like, he's got a single Tesseract, but there's two on the sprue. So if you clip one and it goes flying off into space, you can just grab the other. I really love that. Okay, we're gonna put all these away. So we've already got our base here. And I'm just gonna clean up that little nub. I'm gonna change my exacto blade out. This one is very dull. 
Here we go. Tiny little scalpel blade. That's much better. All right, so let's go to Captain America's assembly instructions. Now he's this entire left page here. So first we're gonna glue his torso together. Now here, my clippers can't actually get in there easily. So I'm gonna actually take the X-Acto knife here and just push through that slightly. There we go. And then we're just gonna clean that little, little nub up right there. So what we're looking at now is mold lines. And we don't really have much to speak to there. Now, of course, this is a front and back half of a piece, so they may go together very nice and cleanly. Taking off just the little nubs where the uh, sprue met up with the model. Very, very little to do there. We're gonna get our Jester's plastic glue out. And with this stuff, what I like to do is actually, I don't like to apply it directly. So I'll take one of these Ziploc bags. We're not gonna need them anymore. I'm just going to, just off camera, I'm just gonna keep a little puddle of it off to the side here. And what I do then is, this is just me being a little pedantic. I take just a paper clip and just bend it out. And I use the paper clip to apply the glue. I'm just going to just basically dip the paper clip in the glue and then just spread it around a little bit. And in this case, on this model, we have these little pins, so we know they're going to make physical contact. And there we are, there's the front and back of the torso glued together. Now we have two small pouches to go on the sides there, and we've got little keys that they go into. So now the only thing is I don't like about this is these aren't numbered, so it's actually not clear which pouch is going to be which. We have spares though, we have two 12s and two 11s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip a single one off, and we're just going to see which side it fits on, because I have a feeling those keys are probably going to guide them to the right side. Now you can see why you might want a spare. This looks very easy to drop. So this is part 11, and it clearly does not go there. Does it go on this side? Also not sure which way is up. There we go, that looks pretty clean. I can see now that's quite flush. So I'm gonna say 11 goes under his right arm. Let's just test it again on the left side. Which looks like it might not matter. It looks like they may be similar enough, it just isn't important. Checking the fit, that looks really good though. So let's get our little dab of glue there. So in this case, because the piece is so small, I'm applying the glue to the torso side. And there we go. So you see there's sort of like a little, kind of like octagon-ish shape here. We've got the three angles. And that's what it really aligned to. So we're gonna now clip part 12 off. Check it as well. Do feel it's a little strange that they went through the effort to number the parts and then didn't number them in the assembly instructions. Because they're not obviously numbered after the step they're used in. Okay, and just shaving off that little bump and checking for our octagonish side. Let's give it a look. Hey, we got it right in one. Or did we? I actually am now second guessing the fit of these. I think we're good. And it's on the floor. So I could spend a lot of time looking for it right now, or I could just clip the other one off the sprue. Let's give it a one second look. It has bounced to who knows where. So we're gonna take advantage of the fact that there's a spare on the sprue here. I'm gonna not waste my day looking for this little piece. So we're going for the second number 12 here. Let's hope I don't lose this one. Okay. 
Now let's test fit that again. So we just get a little glue on there. Let's go back to our paper clip. Feel like one of these is on the wrong side. All right, let's get a shield arm put together. So we're looking for the arm with all the divot holes in it. So it's gonna be this one right here. So just clean up the little nub from the sprue there. That does appear to be it for mold line cleanup. That is remarkable. Oh no, there's a little bit right here. Little tiny bit. Very, very minimal though. And of course we need the shield and one of his shoulders. Looks like that's gonna be part 10 because that's our shoulder without the Avengers logo on it. Yeah, so we've got two shoulders. One has an Avengers logo and one doesn't. So that tells you this one here is the one without the logo. And of course, the shield. I just wanna cut away our little nub here. We wanna be very careful that we don't cut into the plastic as we do so. Okay, and that was the only two points of contact with that mold. And now we have two little different flanges here. One is, this one's a little bit smaller than this one, so I think the small one's gonna go fist forward. Let's see if I'm looking at this. Yeah, so you see the small one here and the larger one back here. So we're gonna glue down the shield first. In this case, I'm gonna take the shield. I'm actually just going to apply the little bit of glue to these two nubs. And there we are. Now we can hold that together, sandwich it, while we get a little bit of the glue. And here we go, just, I forgot to clean this sprue mark off the shoulder pads, so let's just get that very quickly. It's just the one small, one small little nub here on the end. And that goes into a little keyed slot, and there it is. So, arm is done torso is done. Next up we just have the shoulder pad on the other arm to go. So clearly it's the one with the Avengers logo on it. Instructions make that very clear. I'm just trying to uh, shave away that little mold nub. I don't want it. There's the other side. So let's get his other arm clipped. And we have the little piece of flying sprue to get rid of here. And just clean those nubs. I've always called them nubs. I don't really think that's the correct or technical term in any way, shape, or form. They're probably bumps or connection points, but if I say, hey, clean that mold nub up, you probably can figure out what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna keep calling them that. And then the last one was actually back here where you know, the joint is, we don't need to worry about that at all. So we need the little dab of glue. We're gonna get it on the arm this time because it's the easier part to handle. All right, there we go. There's our Avengers marked shoulder pad. That's this person right here. Then everything goes onto the torso. So let's clip the head first because we clearly need that next. I think we're supposed to leave that little key. Yes, we are. And just looking at the head, I see nothing in the way of a mold line to remove, which means there's a mold line I can't see. That's all that ever means. There's always a mold line. So here, because this head has the little keyed slot, I'm gonna get the glue on its side. But I don't like what that is. I got a little bit of glue just kind of squirting out of the neck. I'm just gonna grab some paper towel and just quickly dab that away before it sets. Just don't want that to melt away any detail it doesn't need to. And then as the glue kind of melts the plastic, you can adjust the fit just a little bit. Now we can start to get his arms on here. 
So we'll do the unshielded arm first. And again, we're just gonna get a little bit of glue on the tab here. We've got a tiny, tiny bit of mold separation kind of around the back of his neck and right here at the shoulder. I'm actually gonna get just a little more glue on this. Just because we can tell looking at that sort of strap that goes around his shoulder that there's an area inside that where the contact is made and we don't have to worry about visible glue seepage inside there. And then obviously the same on the other arm. So I'm gonna use the same shortcut here. We're going to put the glue on the torso side instead of on the arm side. I just want to see if I can shimmy the shoulder pad just a little bit. I don't like this gap right here. I don't think I can do much about it, but... And let's get our left and right legs put together. So the leg does have a little guidance nub on top. So just leave that there. And so all that's left on the sprue now is that one extra pouch. So we can set that aside, clean up our legs. A little mold bump here on the front and a little bit on the back. Hey, camera. Thank you. So our only three contact points were a little bit on the back of the boot, a little bit on the front, and right up here. And this part's going to actually disappear up into the torso. So we really only have to worry about cleaning these two points. Now here I can see a little bit of a mold line just on the back of the boot. I'm going to scrape that away lightly. It kind of disappears into the folds of the fabric, so it's not too pronounced. So far, the mold lines on these kits have been very, very minimal. I'm very impressed with that. And there's a little bit on the front. And the front, his uh, boot has like a flat surface there, so it's very, very easy to clean that. And now here, I can see a mold line. Runs right through the knee and up the front of the leg. So that so far has been the most pronounced mold line on Captain America. Which is impressive because normally with this type of model you would have had it all the way around the shield. And that really wasn't the case here. I'm just getting some glue on one half of the leg. We can put that together. And as we put them together we want a nice tight fit but we're looking to make sure we don't accidentally cause glue to kind of squirt out anywhere. And now there's two little nubs here that these just fit into. I may actually need to shave these down just a little bit to make sure they fit properly. So I did leave the little, little bit of sprue nub behind there and it may actually impact our fit. So I'm just going to take that off. And here I'm just going to directly apply the glue. We've got a pretty, a lot of join here. I don't want to muck around with it. Oh, that does not fit together easily at all. There we go. I'm just holding it from the wrong angle, I guess. Let's push that all together. I had a little bit of glue just squirt out under the belt here, so I'm just going to clean that off before it warps the plastic. My concern here is that everything's still pretty loose. Like, the head should not be coming off at this stage. So let's just do this. We're going to try maybe putting the plastic glue on the plastic bag caused a little bit of a problem. So let's just try and glue his head directly. Okay, we're gonna just leave this for a few minutes. Actually, we'll get him on his base first, then we'll leave him for a few minutes. 
Now the base doesn't have specific footing. You can literally put him anywhere on it. It's not, you know, they show him kind of like this in the picture, you know, foot over the grate, but it doesn't particularly matter. It's not like keyed to his feet. You know, it's a generic base. It's not specifically Captain America's base. And you can tell that because Crossbones is literally on the same base in the next picture. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold that till it glues. Well, I'm checking here is to see how he occupies the volume of the base. I actually wanna just move him over this way just a little bit so that he's more center line on the base. He could even be a little bit back of center. Like that's not a problem right there. Just clean the little smudge up. So I'm gonna leave that for a little bit for the glue to set and then we'll get to painting. Now I'm not painting him in this video. This is the end as far as the unboxing is concerned, but we'll have lots of assembly and lots of painting videos coming up on the channel in the next few days slash weeks leading up to the release in November. So that is the Captain America assembly and the Marvel Crisis Protocol unboxing. So thanks for watching today and until next time, do something epic. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new content in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do so at patreon.com slash epic duck. Every little bit helps me keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, keeps a roof over my family's head and food on the table. Honestly, Patreon is what makes doing this every single day possible. You can also catch me six times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd really love it if you came by to watch my show sometime and clicked follow. A big thank you to everyone who has supported my stuff, both past and present, over the years. It's been a wild ride, and I couldn't do this without the fans and all of the wonderful flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you make this worth doing. So let's keep doing this together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.